We had originally, we had 86 kids sign up uh, from day one. And when we geared back up and talked to all the parents, we had like four kids that said that they weren't gonna, their parents said no, not this year. It means a lot. As you saw this morning, we had a tremendous support, um, outpouring of the neighborhood. Um, we, it means a lot to me because we're bringing back this community. We're bringing back what has been here for over 50 years. Keeping everybody's, you know, distance apart. You know, kids at that age, you know, they want to play with each other. So it's kind of, I mean, I coach T-ball, so you got four and five year olds. So that, it's kind of hard really to keep the kids apart because, you know, they want to interact with each other. Coming back, just seeing the smile on the kids' face, man, that, that alone for me is satisfaction. Uh, seeing how much fun a kid has. I know how much fun I had when I played baseball. So I can only imagine how much fun they're having. But the main thing in the West, what I told my team, I said it's a game. Well, it didn't have fun. It's been a long week. I got five kids playing three different teams. It's 12 years I've been doing it. So uh, yeah, it was a long wait. And uh, everybody was like, we don't think it's gonna happen. And it did. And uh, yeah, we're back to play. Uh, the kids are adapting to the new safety requirements. Um, now that uh, every time we take a break, we have to uh, give them hand sanitizer and stuff like that, you know, like wipe them off, so that. And then on top of it, they can't use the same um, bat and uh, helmet, so we have to give them their own bats and helmets so they won't use the same as anyone else, so they, um, so they won't get the risk of, of catching anything. Normally I play second base, but I can also play shortstop, uh, center field, sometimes right field. I'm definitely excited to see my friends again, especially with COVID, um, just kind of being being here, it's just been hard to come in contact with any, with anyone. Basically. You know, if you've been around anyone that's been sick, we get to just constantly keep reminding each other uh, to just to be safe. Um, you know, it's hard. Um, I think our instinct is to kind of to um, be a little bit closer than six feet, but just constantly reminding, and it's it's good to be aware of wearing masks and um, uh, just keep keeping uh, keeping a, a distance. Well, I think there's a learning curve, you know, um, uh, the, the boys are keeping social distancing in the, um, in the dugouts and, you know, we can't bring food in the dugouts. And um, what I like is at the uh, end of the games, they kind of tip their hat to each other rather than high-fiving. But um, the essence of baseball is there, but I uh, definitely do miss some of the, some of the uh, traditions of it. Well, I, I just love the sounds of it, you know, kids just having fun. Um, it seems like in baseball, the, the boys just have a lot of fun. There's always fooling around kind of stuff. Just the sounds of the ball hitting the bat, sounds of the ball landing in a glove, and the sound of uh, kids just having fun. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful sound. We acted pretty quickly, um, and we worked very, very hard um, to create a set of protocols that we felt comfortable with, comfortable with as an organization. And part of those protocols were clearly put in line um, with the, the mandates by the government and the governor and the CDC. We wanted to make sure that first and foremost that our, if we were going to train and then if we were going to play, that we were going to do it in the most safe way possible for our, for our membership. And that's the players and the families and the coaches and staff because we're all interconnected with all of this. Obviously, when you're dealing with exposure, you're dealing with a player that has tested positive versus a family member versus a friend um, when you're dealing with staff or a staff's spouse or staff's friend there's all these variables and there's all these you get the situations where it's it's the person that's active or it's once removed or twice removed when the exposure was um, how long the spo exposure was from ago and so we have all these things that we put in place but generally we follow our protocols, and if a if a player is uh, directly tested positive, um, and they've been in contact um, at training, so they've been where they've been with the team for uh, for one or two practices, more than likely that team is going to be shut down for two weeks um, for the safety of the group, and the player would be required to test negative twice with COVID tests and or they could return uh, 14 days past their last symptom of COVID. 
soccer is five weeks back. I think I think that lacrosse maybe a little bit longer, six weeks, seven weeks back. Lacrosse actually had some games um, this last weekend where they went up and played in, in the Maryland area. So they're already competing. But our first two phases of protocols of training was maximum social distance. Players were didn't get anywhere near each other. They were wearing masks when they entered the field. They were allowed to take their masks off to train. Coaches were wearing masks, staying at least, I was encouraging at least like 20 yards, 15 yards away from the players. They were mostly only doing technical work, which means, you know, passing the ball, working on little skills. Um, and we basically went into two weeks of phases, and we are now in phase three, which now matches phase three of what's going on in Virginia under their guidelines, which is allowing some playing. We've really continued to encourage social distancing we've encouraged social distancing during practice like it breaks they are to be at least 10 feet away from each other we want everybody to spread out we don't want players walking together on the facility we're trying to be as safe as possible for our membership but also we want to be able to have a functioning practice so to speak